which means the purpose of business or for them to earn their livelihood in a clear cut manner there is no discrimination based on any other criteria at the same time we have one more great principle that is one man one value he may be a rich person or a poor person but he should get the same value and same treatment that is why in the constitution it is mentioned that one person has the voting right of only one value so one person one value one vote makes a real sense but keeping in view of the present scenario or the real context of the indian nation mr b r ambedkar also rightly pointed out that if the equality in social and economic life are not at all accepted and only for the name sake if the constitution survives then it troubles in the political democracy then it leads to us for a democratic nation where in reality where there is no equal value for every person and if every person is not same at the context of same value then the political democracy or the entire democracy will be in peril it may be just killed away so in order to maintain the perfect democracy we have to follow this and if we run in the contradictions of the principles then automatically the democracy will see its end so ambedkar wished all the best for the nation wishing that we should not run in controversies or the contradictions and lead a happy and democracy should survive for lifelong this is the main purpose of mr b r ambedkar mentioning his views in on 26 jan of 1950 what happened next what are the major challenges we'll discuss now in the initial periods the constitution was framed now as soon as the constitution was framed and we got the constitution into effect we got the elections and we got the government or literal meaning is the leaders now the basic task of the leaders is that they have to bring the development of the nation they have to maintain the unity of the nation they have to maintain the integrity of the nation in order to maintain or develop the nation and to bring them united and integrated we also have to remember that that should not come at the cost of the democracy the democratic setup should also sustain properly we have to develop the nation at the same time simultaneously you have to maintain the diversified nation into a united context and then we have to maintain the democratic setup in a successful manner this was a really a challenging task in front of the first initial leaders who got their chance to rule the nation or to guide the nation of the first democratic setup after 200 period of british colonial domination and we drafted the constitution which is of elaborately discussed of each and every right and everything powers and everything then we came to an idea that we should have a systematic elections universal adult franchise then we moved on to frame the nation's goals the intention and everything should be correlated at the same time people should be treated equally these all were the different challenging tasks in front of the first government which came into power in 1952 what happened in the first elections what was the percentage of the voting how did the people come to get voting rights there did the people have any idea about it if the people don't have idea how did the government have brought them into the idea what are the changes that government has brought how did people get the knowledge of the election voting system because prior to this there was no universal adult franchise existing in our nation only just 1% to 10% of the people are known of utilizing how to write of the vote so let us see what happened we will discuss now we shall discuss and focus on the first general elections what is the basic importance of first general elections a country where with india was dominated for nearly 200 years and we don't have any basic rights at any point of time even we are not at all treated as human beings so we have to understand the point here that for the first time we are going to face the multitasking challenge for the government or for the independent nation of india what is the challenge here is it really very tough or what made it a challenge here see here by the name itself it is clear the first general elections the first general elections it means that till now we don't have any general elections mentioned for us in the first general elections one more interesting fact or the one more fueling concept for that is that the government of india has introduced the universal adult franchise this the same universal adult franchise 
was introduced in Switzerland in 1971, which is far later than India. Switzerland is a well-developed country than India even today also. But even they have introduced the universal adult franchise issue in 1971, which is nearly 30 years after Indians have given that. Now, what is this universal adult franchise? According to Article 326. the indian constitution ensures the power of every individual whoever attains age of 18 years irrespective of their age category caste creed or color will get the right to vote he may be an educated person an uneducated person a literate person an illiterate person he may be a hindu he may be a muslim he may be a non religious person but irrespective of all these things any indian who has an age of 18 years of age of at present will get the right to vote according to this article of 326 this issuing of the right to vote to every individual irrespective of their caste color creed race and other place regions or other discriminations even for boys and girls is known as universal adult franchise this universal adult franchise was adopted in india from the very first general elections onwards now the challenging task for the indians or for the issue is now that many of the women they don't know or they are not known by their own names they are known either by their father name or by their husband's names now the task is that we don't know how many people are staying in a family exactly we have to get the census of everything then we have to frame the list of the candidates then we have to do all these things so the government of india has done for us the election commission was set up what did you get the setting up of election commission the election commission has got the duty and the responsibilities entitled to it that it makes sure the list of the voters then it makes sure the party candidates and then everybody has nominated there or a systematic procedure for conducting the elections in this systematic procedure of conducting elections again we got a new task for us to be performed the main difficult task is now on the process the main difficult task is that as indians have given the universal adult franchise to each and every person in the nation of their age criteria now what about the women whose names are not enrolled in it then what about the people those are illiterates those who don't know to read and write how are they going to put their votes really it's a challenging task because we can't say by name it's a, those who can't read and write how are they going to recognize a person so they can recognize by seeing it so the election commission came up with a novel idea that they are going to put pictures in front of the candidates and symbols they brought pictures of the photos the photographs and the party symbols will be kept so that even the uneducated people can come forward with a view like what is the name of the candidate or what is the picture of the candidate and what would be the symbol of the candidate and they also made this process and in some completely down areas or where the villages are completely in the uneducated stream they have come up with a new ideology that where they have kept the symbols allotted for the ballots for example for congress they kept the picture of hand and a separate ballot was kept for bjp they kept the symbol of the lotus and a separate ballot was kept for tdp the cycle picture a separate ballot was kept so that which one you like you can go and put your vote in that instead of choosing somebody else you can simply put your vote in that particular ballot which means that your vote goes to that particular candidate in this way the novel ideas were invented by the election commission to deal with the task of the first general elections so finally the first general elections were completed so what happened of the results which party won the seats and in what majority they have won who became the prime minister of india for the first time we shall discuss all these things now what happened in the first general elections we shall discuss this one with the heading of one party dominance see the first elections were conducted in the year 1952 they respective in the 1957 the other one in the 1962 in the first three general elections 
द सिंगल पार्टी हैज गॉट द मेजोरिटी ऑफ फूड्स द सिंगल पार्टी विच गॉट द एंटायर मेजोरिटी ऑफ फूड्स इज द कांग्रेस द कांग्रेस पार्टी वॉज सिक्योर्ड द मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ वोट्स ऑफ नियरली फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वोटिंग एंड सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द सीट्स वॉट अबाउट द अदर पार्टीज विच पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द इलेक्शन वेर द एबल टू गेट द सक्सेस ऑफ द रिजल्ट See, it's clearly evident that it's one-party dominance. The so Congress got the majority of the seats and majority of the voting percentage. Automatically, the other parties, the others, were getting only eleven percent of voting, and they could not withstand their position even as an opposition party at that point of time. And in these three years of like three terms of elections, like fifty-two to fifty-seven and fifty-seven to sixty-two and sixty-two to sixty-seven. there was no other single party standing against congress or talking against congress that is why it is also known as the congress system now in this congress system which has given a chance of no other party to get into elected jawaharlal nehru became the undisputed leader of the congress and he took swan in as a prime minister of india for the first time of the independent india and he was in this position till his death in 1964 so he was the leader who ruled for the longest period of time as a prime minister of india now moving on to the statistics or the realities of the technical issues of what are the possibilities and what are the negatives if a single party is in power the single party is in power does not allow any other parties to contest it's not the case here here the congress is allowing all the other parties to contest for the elections then what is the other problem that the other parties are not able to get there the problem is that congress is so popular because of the independence movement and because of the major popular leaders are present in congress the victory of congress has become very easy and the other parties even though they have the famous personalities in their parties could not make their room so wide that they could not get any of the uh, stagnant or strategic position in the politics they are also getting some seats but they could not determine the success of the congress so congress made its clear victory in the first three elections and evident that it is a national party and it got many of the positions here now moving on to the technicalities as per the democratic setup we should have multi party system in the multi party system what is the real scenario here in india do we don't have the multi party system yeah we have the multi party system we have congress we have cpi we have the other independents running for the elections but the point is the other parties are not getting the maximum number of seats which are required for them to stand in the opposition position or in a standing position against the congress the congress is getting a clear sweep of 70% of seats the other 30% of seats are shared by the other parties this is a basic uh, issue what is happening in these three elections but the situation changed further but before its the situation changed if congress is getting the maximum number of seats what was the standing position of the opponents who is going to oppose the actions of the congress the congress is not a single party or a single member party it is a group a larger group of people are staying in congress so the issue based differences are present between all the leaders and instead of the threat from the opposition the have threat from the internal politics itself because even though there is no multi party system existence at present but there is a chance of getting existence of multi party system but at the same time in congress itself we have the leaders opposing the views of the government we have the leaders standing against the government we have the leaders standing opposite to the view of the government and discussing about it so in this way there are opposition candidates also present in the congress itself to discuss about the opposition point of view so that the benefit will be done to the people and they used to struggle to get hype or their leadership but not against the government and at the same time we never had any issue with the ideological differences so seriously and the success of the congress was it was run uniformly in all the standards and the other parties were also able to get groom after the 15 years period that is after the 1967 elections were very crucial elections because for the first time we have seen the other non congress parties forming the government and now 
once the, there is no multi-party system and there is no chance for the opponents, what happened for the Congress? In the Congress itself, we have the leaders questioning the other issues which are not addressed by the Congress government. Then what made the solution for them? The leaders have thought within themselves and tried to solve it by bringing the necessary steps for it. In this way, the Congress, even though it has a single party dominance, it moved on further and brought a major changes and successfully it ruled up to 15 years of the initial period and the next term was a challenging term. What happened in the next term? We shall discuss now.